I talked about this a little bit in um, a couple of previous videos. Uh, the reality is this. It's, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when you're going to need this. Alrighty, welcome back. This is Tim from Well Done Homestead, and we're going to do another little communications video here. I am, I was going to say I'm in my ham shack, but I'm actually just in my attic. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I have a little desk set up here with uh, my radio, um, and I'm going to show you my antenna setup that I have. Um, it's, by all means, this is not the end all be all for um, ham radio, but uh, I figured I would talk through some of the high frequency options that you can get. Um, mine is an extremely budget conscious, budget friendly um, HF radio that uh, will, will cover the spectrum. Okay, this is my uh, ham radio. This is my HF radio. Uh, it is a cheap, Cheap being a relatively loose term, uh, Zygau X6100. Um, it is a 50 megahertz transceiver. It will transmit up to 10 watts. Right now it's running on, you can see there, five watts transmission power. And you can see I'm on 7.272. Um, that is uh, 40 meters and um, it looks like you can see the little waterfall here. You can see that there's some other people communicating there. Um, we, we are able to hear one guy. It's not super, super clear, but um, okay, find a focus. There we go. Uh, it's not super, super clear, but we, we'll be able to kind of scroll through. We're going to look at all the different ones. We'll look at, uh, well, we'll look at everything, really, honestly. We'll run just kind of through the whole gamut of things and uh, see what is... Uh, what people are talking on but uh, anyway so yeah you can see that's the radio there it's not a very big radio you can see it's actually a relatively small one um, and by the way that's how you spell zygau x-i-e-g-u and uh, this radio has a lot of uh well there's a lot of controversy about this radio but there's also a lot of um uh videos that you can find on youtube of uh, different guys that have actually gone through this entire radio and uh, given an entire breakdown for this specific radio, um, and I will link uh, I will link a couple of videos maybe in the description, and that way you guys can check those out. But uh, it comes obviously with a mic, and um, you've got some adjustments you can make there on the microphone, and then it also came with a little. Uh, speaker because um, the the speaker right here is relatively uh, relatively small and it's not very loud. So, um, but yeah, if you're into computers, the these things, this one's actually pretty cool. You can make some major adjustments to it, um, and and it actually responds very well to those adjustments. I have a software. Uh, um, that I can put on this one and actually uh, change it so that it will give me a little better waterfall, a, a little nicer readout, but it is, um, it's a pretty heavy drain on the battery. It is battery powered. I mean, you can see I have the power cable right here, um, but it is battery powered. And uh, so as a result of that, it would actually drain that battery out pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna play with this in a minute, but I'm gonna show you my antenna setup and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there. All right, this is the antenna box. Um, this is an NFED, um, Chameleon, uh, CHA NCOM, uh, 2V2. Um, and, uh, you can see here, I've got my, my wire here running all the way over to the other, building there it's on that pole right there you can't really see it super well but it's hanging on that pole and honestly this is a pretty sketch setup for the antenna um I, i'm running it horizontally or uh i'm sorry i'm running it parallel to the ground yeah horizontally um because of 
I was working in 10 meters and that gives me the ability to chat with some guys uh, out in Pittsburgh, uh, which is a little ways away from me. And um, anyway, so that, that it's kind of nice to be able to do that. This wire right here is my counterpoise. It's literally just a 16 gauge speaker wire um, that I have run off the bottom post here and just out the window dangling down. So it's a, I mean, it's a decent setup, believe it or not, it's a decent setup. And I've got my, um, my filter here uh, on my lead and then uh, run up to the radio. So yeah, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna try and do some stuff here. Um, the nice, one of the really nice things about this radio is that it is, um, an, it has an auto tuner in it so that you can actually auto tune the antenna, um, which this antenna is already, uh, built for the 160 meters all the way down to six meters, but, um, all the way up to six meters. No down. Uh, anyway. And, um, so it already, it works pretty well, but, um, being able to tune it to fine tune at so that the SWR is right where it needs to be is, is fun. It's really, really, really good. It's a good setup. So we're going to, uh, we're going to play with this a little bit and see what we can do. You can see these guys here, they're just kind of chewing the rag. Um, they're just having a conversation, just kind of shooting the breeze here together. Um, but uh, you can see they're, they're coming in pretty clear. I'm curious about this right here. That's not me. <laughs> KB2BRM. That's his call sign. These guys sound like they're right in the same room. It's crazy. But literally, this is what this is what's so great about these kinds of radios is that you can listen to the information it's it's right there like you don't have to communicate they're gonna just give information and and honestly it might take some time to sift through some of that but um if you go through and you i mean you can see the different waterfalls these are all little different conversations and they're going to come in at different um strengths and and uh, you know as far as like the frequency coming in at different strengths and it all depends on how you have your antenna set up. Now, my antenna set up, it does have a bit of a swoop in the middle of it, but my antenna is, is parallel to the ground. So it's a horizontal end fed. And honestly, what that's going to do is that's going to send the uh, radio frequencies from me up into the ionosphere and then bounce down onto the ground. And anything that's coming up in that uh, diameter or in that... In that uh, uh, yeah, in that circle there, that that's gonna that's gonna hit the ionosphere and come to my antenna, and I'm gonna be able to hear them uh, if they're within that radius. Um, it's it's interesting because you know you can you can change that radius by angling the antenna instead of having it running this way. If you have it run this way with a mast in the middle and run it like this, it's called an inverted V. If you run an inverted V that's actually going to send the frequency farther out before it hits the ionosphere and bounces back down to the earth. And I've actually been able to hear people in Italy. I've been able to hear people in England, uh, Germany. Uh, depending on the time of day, I've heard, been able to hear people down in South America. And you can also change the direction of where that V is, is set up, and it sends that frequency kind of 
and it gives you a better, a stronger signal um, as you're listening. I'm actually going to change this up a little bit, and we're going to start at six meters and kind of work our way back. I don't know that we'll find anybody on six meters, but we're going to give it a try. I have this set up to pick up uh, six meters right now. Uh, we're at 538539, and obviously that's not, uh, I mean, that's not going to get me anywhere, really. It's just kind of, there's nothing specifically happening there. Um, looks like there's a conversation there. Let's see if we can get it. Nope. Six meters is a little bit of an oddball uh, as far as a frequency. There's not a lot usually happening on six meters. Um, the six meter band is going to become more of a local thing. And honestly, most people aren't going to use six meters. They're going to use either two meters or 70 centimeters, um, which is uh, in a completely different frequency. Actually, two meters is like 100, 145 uh, megahertz. Excuse me. And uh, 70 centimeters is like 400 and 440 megahertz. So um, let's uh, let's keep scrolling here and see if we can find a conversation. Right now we're on, on six meters, this upper sideband, uh, and I'm not really seeing much of anything here. Just a bunch of st static and weirdness. Wow. It doesn't look like there's much happening on six meters here. Not gonna lie. Well, maybe let's check that. Nope. All right, let's see here. All right, we're gonna bump it up to, uh, we're gonna bump from six meters to 10 meters. I can actually hear that guy. You just barely hear him. You can tell there's a conversation there. I can't tell what he's saying. I heard him laugh a little bit. Um, that means we're just on the edge of, of reception, honestly. It's it's just on the edge of that radius. I'm not sure where he's at, obviously, because I can't hear. It's kind of a bummer, because I, I could actually talk to him. Here. All right, you guys hear that? That is, <laughs> it sounds like, sounds like somebody fell asleep at the wheel there for a minute. That is Morse code. Uh, they call that CW. Um, and people still communicate with Morse code. Um, it's kind of a, a badge of honor for a ham radio technician uh, or, or general or whoever uh, to communicate in CW. Um, there are specific portions of the band that you are only allowed to communicate with CW because there's actually a lot of people that do this still, which is pretty wild. So anybody that says that uh, CW is dead or Morse code is dead, they haven't been on ham radio recently because it's, it's always on here, always. There's another one. I don't understand it. And they actually speak in a kind of a code anyway, um, because you can imagine typing out one letter at a time, tap, tap, tap it away. I mean, that'd be just horrible. I'd hate that. Um, it takes forever to, to say anything. So they have their own little encoded things that they do and acronyms and that kind of thing. But that's pretty cool. This is 20 meters. 
I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of the wrong time of day to be 20 meters. That's Spanish. Who knows where he's at? Could be a bunch of different places. Fact is, he could be in this country. Who knows? There you go. That's Harrison, Ohio. There you go. He's in Harrison, Ohio, just outside of Indiana, uh, the border of Indiana. So not too bad. I mean, that's probably 300 miles. That's not bad. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go to the next one. Well, that's obviously CW right away. That's 10 megahertz. It's uh, 10.100. I'm pretty sure that they grabbed some of these sounds for Star Wars. Pretty sure. All right, now we're back to 40. Wow, that's hot right there. Okay, now I feel like I'm stuck in a post-apocalyptic video game. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool song. <laughs> wow. I've never, I've never heard this before. It's... You have to have a special license to broadcast music on a ham radio. You're not supposed to broadcast music over ham radio unless you have special permission. This is, this is odd. Let's see, hang on. Let's see if they identify. Nope, they just on to the next song. These guys are talking about Commodore 64 computers wiring up to do CW with. These guys are old school, like, techie guys. Old school. We're talking like 80s. 80s tech. Maybe older than 80s. Uh, no, 80s. I think Commodore 64 came out in the 80s. 83, maybe 84? I can't remember exactly when. I was pretty young. Pretty wild. Some Spanish. I mean, reality is though, so many people speak Spanish in this country. It could be, it could be literally in New Jersey. I mean, I don't know. Uh, or it could be in New York. I, I don't know. It could be all around. But that's coming in real clear. I'm guessing he's pushing probably well over 100 watts, maybe 200. 
Phantom. Tommy is kind of the mascot of it, but uh, it's, it's just a round table for people. I mean, you can see, if you look at the waterfall, all, all of those peaks, well, I can't say all of them, but most of those peaks are going to be conversations. I mean, 40 meters is kind of where it's at for uh, high frequency HF radio. And, I mean, and it changes as far as where you can hear, uh, how far the frequency will travel, how far it will go. Um, it changes throughout the day. When the, when the sun goes down, 40 meters really opens up and you can send your signal and receive your signal from a very, very far distance. 40 meters is, is pretty nuts. I mean, really, honestly, with 40 meters and, and even 20 meters, you can communicate all over the whole country. You really can, uh, especially when the sun goes down. If you set your antenna up properly, you can just you can just listen all over the place. It's pretty cool. You might be thinking to yourself, why does it matter if I can hear or communicate? Uh, around around the country or even around the world with a radio like this. Um, and I talked about this a little bit in um, a couple of previous videos. Uh, the reality is this. It's, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when you're going to need this. Um, because I don't want to be a, 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 you know, a, a doomsdayer. But uh, the reality is, if you study history, if you read the Bible, if you read, I mean, uh, we'll just, we'll go with history because it may be, maybe some of you guys don't believe the Bible, so we'll just stay with, the, with history. If you look at history, you can see over and over and over again the signs of the fall of a civilization, the fall of a, a kingdom as it were. And our nation is poised for it. We're like ready. We're like right on the precipice. We're like this close. I, I can't imagine that we are not going to have some type of cataclysmic collapse in the near future. And I'm going to put a, a time frame on it because I don't know. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is the end times and that Jesus is going to come back and I'm not going to put a, you know, a time frame on it because let's be honest, I, I don't know. Nobody knows the day or the hour. That's what the Bible says. Nobody knows the day or the hour except the Father. That's it. So I'm not going to do that because that'd be foolish. But I will say this. Um, If you read history, if you look at events in the Bible, you can see civilizations rise and fall. And you can see that it's a result of, generally, it's a result of sin. It's a result of a, a nation full of people that only care about themselves. They don't care about anybody else. They don't care about morality or ethics they just don't care all they care about is number one and that's it <laughs> and we are that nation like that's where we're at i mean you look at the whole world the whole world's kind of that way and um I, I don't know if it's going to be the end soon i have no idea no idea we could trundle on this way for another 500 years who knows <laughs> who knows? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, I'm not worried about it. But I am going to prepare myself. And that's why I am putting this stuff out. To be prepared. So that you guys can be prepared. So that you can get yourself to the position where you can help your family. You can help your community. You can help your group be ready. We've got a mess on our hands uh really truly a mess and so as a result of that you've got to do something to to take care of yourself and your family
because the government's not going to do it. They're just not. You're going to be on your own. None of the other nations are any better off than we are. They're just as messed up. They're not going to send help. It's up to, it's up to you to take care of you. Um, be prepared. And I'm not saying that getting a radio is going to be the thing that's going to keep you from whatever. No. I mean, if you don't have water, you're going to die. If you don't have food, you're going to die. If you don't have a community, you're probably going to die. So those are things you've got to work on. But being able to communicate in a grid down situation, a blackout situation, or, or a brownout situation where things are, you know, there's no electricity. Like I said, this thing's battery operated. My little handy talkies are, are battery operated as well. So being able to communicate with one another, super vitally important, vitally important. Because you want to be able to hear what's going on around your area, around your state, around that, that portion of the country, whatever, whatever. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to wrap up with that. Stay prepared. <laughs>